Hey guys, Dimitri here from UH Studio. It's been a while. I thought in this video we can do a very quick tower design, completely non destructive with modifiers. So let's get started with it. First, I'm gonna sh go Shift A, add a plane, scale it up. I'm gonna go inside and create a loop cut control R exactly in the center. Let's get rid of let's get rid of these two vertices. X for vertices. Next, let's get rid of this edge. X edge. So now we just have these four vertices here. And that's all we really need. So let's go now to the modifier tab and let's start with the fun. So first we're gonna add a mirror modifier. And we'll change that to Y in my case. It's a little bit hard to see, so let's bring it over here. Okay. And next, we're going to add the screw modifier. So I've been looking at people and the way that they use the screw modifier. And I've realized essentially it's a, it's a loft modifier for meshes. If you play with the settings a little bit. So we're going to change the angle now to zero. And the screw amount is actually the amount that it extrudes. I think we just need to uh, flip one of our axes here. Or we, we can turn off smooth shading for now. So that's it, it's very simple. Next, we can add an angle. So with the angle you see we get a really nice, really simple twist. And we can change the number of iterations. All right? I mean, it's, it's made for screws, but it works really well for towers as well. So and we can change the height with the number of screw. So now if we go back to our pretty original shape and let's disable these modifiers in edit mode and let's pull some of these vertices out. So let's push them out like that. And you see the effect that we get right away. Let's go and subdivide this. So right click, subdivide and let's select that vertex and boom. In fact, let's see it now. So, the live effect. So that's what happens when we move one of those vertices out. Very simple, very straightforward. We can change the, the amount of twist if we want to. We can even keep it completely straight. In fact, let's just do that for now. Let's keep this as straight. And let's add another modifier. This time we'll do simple deform. A simple deform has some default deformations that I guess people need a lot. I guess that's why there would be a modifier. And there are some useful combinations. So let's go to taper. And if we change that to Z, and you see it kind of does this weird taper that's backwards. But if we change the factor to negative, we can actually make this taper forwards. Now I'm just going to copy this deform deformer a bit as well. And now let's change it to taper along the X axis. So now we have kind of an interesting shape. If we want to go back, we can go to the screw modifier and slightly adjust our screw. And you see we get something that looks pretty cool already. So we can add a couple more things here now. So first, let's add um, a bevel modifier. I'm going to drag this up to be right underneath of the screw modifier. And you see, all, right away we get a little bit of more definition along those edges. Like if you want to highlight him, if you want to make him more prevalent, we can play with the bevel modifier. Now I've realized I haven't applied my scale. So if I go and see what my item's scale is. Yeah, so I'm going to click Control A and scale. And everything got a little bit squished, but that's okay. So let's go in the screw modifier, give it some proper height something like 115 so that's times two so that's 230 meter tower that's pretty large but that's right i mean we can scale these up and down as we see fit yeah so the nice thing now is with the bevel we can work a little bit better with those edges now there's something screwy happening in here and let's see where what's causing that suspect I may have some vertex vertices that are not exactly along the local axis seem to be there yeah 
Yeah, so it's something from the bevel. Oh, that's that's what it is. So let's change this to angle only. So we don't get any of those extra bevels in there. That's it. I, I, there's still some kind of issue. I'm not sure what it is, but I mean, it's it's one of the ways where you can do it. You can do it with different ways as well, but just start playing and mixing things around to see what you can come up with for a very quick iteration. And now that we have our external massing ready, let's add some floor plates for more realism. So Shift A, Mesh, scale it all the way up, Control A to apply the scale, add a ray, change it to constant offset let's make it 3.8 add a series of these let's hide them because they're the floors that's our shape i'm gonna shift d to duplicate it actually at this point well yeah let's have a duplicate because i want to do some other work on the other one so with the second shape let's get our planes and we want to add a boolean, intersect, click the second shape, and boom, we have some floors. There may be some issues here and there. I think that's fine. Let's add a solidify modifier. So 0.5. And now we have some elements in here as well, some floors. So next let's add a wireframe to the initial one so i'm going to call this bool box and i'll call this tower fa facade and these are my floors okay so now let's add a wireframe and change the thickness to 0.6 or maybe, and let's make it boundary, maybe one in this case. Okay, so now we have something very simple, very straightforward and easy to reproduce. If we wanna play with the bevel modifier, we can sort of change exactly where this wireframe occurs. So let's go back to bevel. And we can even add extra segments. If we space them out, you see we get a slightly different effect here. And maybe we do a subdivision modifier as well. And I'm just going to add this subdivision modifier a little bit higher in the stack. So somewhere before the wireframe and now you see we have twice the density that we had before the reason for doing this is that we want to create glass element so all of these are going to be our panels so let's create a very quick glass material and then we'll create a very quick metal material so let's start first with the metal I'm going to make it where is my surface I'm going to make it slightly dark and metallic and everything else we're going to keep exactly as this. Next with the glass, we're going to take that down as well. And let's change transmission to one and change the alpha to 0.5 or so. And then we need to go in the viewport display settings and change the blend, blend mode to alpha blend. Now, let's go back to the modifier. In the wireframe, let's uncheck replace original and material offset to one. So what we just did is we told it to keep the first material as is, which is the glass, and then the second material, the wireframe gets offset by one. Now, let's just play a little bit more with the glass. I think it may be too opaque. Oh, we need to change the roughness. There you go. So that's a very quick and easy way to create a simple parametric massing in Blender. Thanks for watching and see you next time.